Welcome back to Scorecast, it's Jacko here and I'm here with Sarah once again from Hot Pod. We managed to make it our way back and we're going to go, we're looking at the, a bit of an, uh, a hot topic sometimes on our, our thread around the frog stand, to hand st frog stand versus crow stand argument. We're going to look at a few headstands as well. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you click below and if you haven't been to uh, Hot Pod Yoga, the link for them is in the description below. So make sure you have a look at that before we get into this tutorial. We're gonna, so if you haven't um, warmed up or seen the video that we've done, uh, the previous one, make sure you check that out, which was we were looking at shoulder mobility and wrist mobility, as well as some exercises to help warm us up. We've obviously done those, so we're ready to go, but check that one out if you haven't done yet. But we're gonna go now, into um, this, this uh, difference, a look at the similarities and difference between what we would in calisthenics call a frog stand and what in, in yoga you call um, a crow stand. So um, for, for me, I'm gonna show you side on, I'm gonna show you frog stand first, where I'm gonna go up onto my toes, my shoulders are gonna be, well, sorry, my hands are gonna be shoulder width apart and I'm gripping tight with my fingers and I'm spreading those fingers. So fingertips are gripping the floor, and the base of my palm is also on the floor. I'm then gonna put the, I've got two options that I like to give. Um, I can put my elbow into the crease or here, the elbow into the crease of my knee there, which means that I stay nice and low on the floor. As I pivot forward and keep pushing down hard into the floor, I'm just gonna gradually try and take my toes off the ground until I'm actually just balancing purely on my hands. I'm nice and low to the ground. It's a little less scary. It's a nice, stable position. My knees are resting, or my lower body is actually resting on that elbow. And because I'm making use of that crease, it's it just sat in there nicely on the elbow. Um, a, a little progression that we would do for a frog stand is taking those knees and putting them a little bit higher and it's probably going to start to get a little bit look more looking like your, your crow. But when I put them on top of the elbow on my tricep, there's the chance that it can slip off. So it's a little bit, it's a bit more challenging in terms of stability, but strength wise, it's exactly the same. But the thing that's nice with that is my hip position is now a lot higher, which is a little bit um, potentially scary for, for some people if they're new to this. But with that hip being higher, it allows me, and I want to come up and get into this um, handstand position. I'm starting from a higher hip position than I would have been if I was, um, if I was starting in that really low position. So what we do in, in, within calisthenics, we, we're building that frog stand as a base for that handstand. And if my hips are, if I'm right down here, that's a long way for me to go and take my knees off and try and get my hips around. So starting with those hips a little bit higher for us is once we're comfortable, is nice for that rotation round and into that handstand. It's funny because uh, we can, we, <laughs> When we get people who are pretty strong into class, um, yeah. they'll go straight into what we would call crow. Yeah. Um, but it is very much as you demonstrated there, which is almost using, how much core were you using there? Because it felt like it was brute strength. Yeah, a lot of shoulders. Yeah. A lot of shoulder strength, so yeah. So I guess the first big difference for us is that we're much more into the core and much more into the hip mobility. Yeah. Um, but Can you give it, give it, yeah, for give sure. us. Okay, so we start um, a little deeper. <laughs> So immediately we can see if you're tight. So one thing we would say that the where I where we start where I said starting with those uh, elbows going in that crease that knee like and I'm on my toes that hip mobility requirement is 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 nothing compared to that. So as you you should definitely work on this hip mobility. But if you're starting, then you can see where we can use. It's not we we like to say rather than being right and wrong. It's like using a regression or a progression that's suitable for you at the time, and then you can build up to where you want to go to. Absolutely, I agree with you. And we're big into functional alignment, meaning that you're not, again, trying to recreate this picture-perfect pose, just because you have people doing stuff like this around you. It's much more about feeling your way into it. Yep. And you know, if you're feeling a pinch in the hip right now, it doesn't matter how much yoga you're going to do, um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's never going to change. <laughs> yeah, if you've got some anterior hip um, impingement. In which case we'd sort of give suggestions about keeping the heels a little bit off and taking the knees a little bit lower, maybe even spent, maybe yeah. even taking a full progression just sort of working on that hip uh, space. And actually going so, and seeing a physio or a doctor. <laughs> that's something that people don't <laughs> seem to think is... Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. Um, so I would start, and uh, normally my instruction would be to um, just have the back of the shoulder here tucked in nicely towards the uh, inner knee. Um, so my elbows are pretty free. 
um, and my weight bearing is going to be here and yeah. lifted up through the hip, uh, through the core. Um, so my hands, uh, I have wide shoulders, so they're quite wide. Um, but again, you have a little placement here, and again, the hands have to be active. Um, very often, we get feedback from people that the wrists are hurting, um, and I think it's probably because we're just going brute force ah, and yeah. we're not pushing away and being active through the whole of the arm as well. So um, we would teach us that. Um, we start to look a little forward. If the head drops, we're a bit sunk. Yeah. Um, and I just start to come high on my tiptoes. And again, it's like someone's looping me up from the back of my waistband. As I just take that very, very natural tip forward, pushing the floor away through my hands, core engaged, and just taking it up to my frog. So it's much more about how we pull up into the core, we yeah. round in, just like we did on that warm-up with you, yeah. from the plank, rounding into the shoulders and yeah. pushing the floor away. Yeah. Um, and it's a much Doing it feels like a much lighter pose than when I saw your first frog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Frog. yeah, yeah. And it's, but we couldn't necessarily get into a stand from that. Yeah, so I think it's we... Where it... Where, it com where, where we're coming from is a... I'm trying to use it to build up the anterior part of my shoulder so that I can actually press out and do handstand press ups and, and, and make my shoulders sort of strong as opposed to just the I guess the purpose of of the pose but there was definitely similarities in terms of hand position was um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a go at one so hand position was the same as in shoulder width fingers spread you were um, pulling up from the hips yeah pulling forward. up so it's like literally you're not leaping look forward a bit look forward a bit yep perfect yeah. point the toes heels to bum Perfect. We've still got now like a relatively straight or vertical forearm. Yeah, and there's a rounding into the back. Yeah. Um, and my hips top. stacked on top of my, my elbows and my wrist? Um, Ish. That would be taking it into a different posture if you were doing that through yoga, but okay. yes, for sure. For we're sure. starting to try, one of the principles like we would talk about is starting to try and stack like one thing on top of the other, which sure. eventually in that handstand, that's where yep. we're trying to get to. It's given us the chance to do that. Yeah, 100%. Great, so I think not too different, it's not um, different. in the end with that high position. Um, yeah. A lot of it's semantics. Yeah. Um, and again, again, as we said, it's how the body works. So yeah. it might be that it's a little your bit head might be telling you you're doing one or the other, but your yeah. body is doing something different. You're yeah. still reaching kind of the... I, I think in summary, a little bit more finesse from Sarah and a little bit more brute strength <laughs> than me. Uh, but we're getting to the, to the same point at the end. So taking that principle of uh, stacking one thing on top of the other, we're going to take this frog stand and try and take it into a, a headstand or through a, a transition of a tripod and then into, into a headstand and just look at some variations that you can use, some progressions and regressions to make it applicable so that you can get uh, the most out of it um, for yourself. So um, I was going to demonstrate first how we would go, we would try and go and get some control and I'm even going to try and do it with a little bit of finesse rather than just boot strength but I'm going to go into my uh, higher uh, frog stand position and then I'm going to try and take my head down and I'm not going to put it between my hands and on a straight line, I'm going to try and put it in front to make a triangle, which gives me a nice base of support, which is going to help me with my balance or make the balance aspect much easier um, when I'm going to work then on my um, trunk alignment. So I'm going to take that head down. And then from there, I'm not going to re just rely on my head. I want to still be actively, if you can see that, actively pushing down with my hands. Try and use your head as least as possible. Then I'm going to take those knees off and come up onto almost this like chair sort of position upside down before I then under control slowly, one bit at a time, trying to get to a nice straight position, getting bum on, locking core down, so I can start to then work on that uh, trunk alignment whilst I'm in that position. If I want to build some strength, I can come down, I could dab the toes on the floor, push down hard with the hands, and then work back up. And I can start to get some reps going of those. And actually, if you, if you're not just resting on your head and you're pushing down there, when you start to come down and come back up, you're going to start to work on some of that strength that you might feel you need to build on when you're in your frog stand positions, if that's where you feel that you're lacking. That can be a great one for, builds, helps build up some of that strength when we're pushing down, as long as you're active with that. But then it's giving us the chance to feel what that hip rotation is like, stack those hips on top of the shoulders, and then start to straighten those legs and start to stack the legs on top of the hips, which are on top of the shoulders, but you then don't have to worry about the balance because you've got hands and your head making a nice triangle, which gives you a nice stable base of support 
I'm not out of breath <laughs> after having only done two reps. And uh, Sarah's going to give us an example of um, if you find it difficult to get into it from like that tilting from that frog stand, a nice way that um, they would go through in some of their classes and how to get into this. Well, I thought it was a great yeah, we example. Yeah, teach them as learning your frog slash uh, yeah. crow. Um, and then we take the, the tripod headstand as a separate entity and then yeah. it's like a more of a progression to build it. To link them together right. if you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, do, you, do you even know where to put the weight on your head? Uh, here. <laughs> Neck, very central. <laughs> so, if you've never done this before, that's a good point. <laughs> this is going to look stupid, right? Just roll with me on this. So, um, babies, that. Oh, look, I've got a mamba now, I look stupid already. No, wait, okay. <laughs> um, Fontanella, the way you find it is thumbs into ears, and pretty well where the. Se yeah, thank you. And pretty well where the second and third finger land. Um, if you just bring them back so that they meet each other, that's that kind of spot that we're aiming to be on. I think sometimes there's a real... Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 I'm not putting... Yeah, I'm not going... <laughs> I'm not going to have pointed to. I thought you were joking, thank <laughs> God. Right, okay, so... Um, sometimes I think um, one of the fear... <laughs> I wish you could see what our cameraman was doing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think sometimes the fear when you're first going into... Um, headstand, if you haven't done it since playground or whatever. Is or, ne or never in a playground because you're playing yeah. football. Yeah, for sure, okay. Um, is uh, when to put that weight. So that's very mindful about where yeah. it's going. I think one of the other feedbacks we get hugely is like, wow, that really hurts. It doesn't hurt, I think it's just if you're not used to it, um, yeah. it's just a bit of getting used to it. Uh, but, as the way yeah, it and I think one of the things on it though is that there's you're only relying on your head and expecting, and, and the hands aren't doing anything. I see people yeah. make the mistake where um, and an example of that is the resting on the head and they would get a bit like panicking and they move their arms. When I was doing that, there's no way I can move my hands there because I'm pushing down with them. If you can move your hands, it means you're just resting on your head. So yeah. massively important. And again, another opportunity to see my legendary triceps in action. Yes. Don't blink or you'll miss it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start here. Um, I've already identified where I'm putting uh, the space, uh, the pressure, with a pressure the connection with the ground down. Yeah, to the yeah. Ground down. Contact point. Yeah. So my hands come down here. Again, I still have broad shoulders, just like last time, so yeah. they're quite wide for me. Um, and I'm going to move my knees in because sometimes even this act of just looping forward can feel a little like, whoa, going to nose plant. Yeah. Um, or you could even start with them closer and put there, again, just like um, you said with the yeah. triangle. Yes. Um, let me get so you can see that nicely on here with that side angle. Yeah. that that head is now making a nice triangle with those hands okay, as so a stable can, base. Yeah, absolutely. So right now, floppy arms doing nothing. Yeah, I'll take them to the extreme. Okay, so <laughs> um, I'm going to get my hands into place. And you bangle out of the way. Yeah, bangle out of the way, yeah. Um, and now I'm going to start working with those hands, okay? Legendary triceps on show. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Um, just and just on that, like, so just something we mentioned, like that forearm being nice and vertical, start working on that stacked position straight away. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, the first thing I'm going to do here is just come up onto my tiptoes, again like someone's looping me up from behind. And I'm pushing the floor away, I'm just readjusting slightly there. And it's a little bit like the door. dolphin you were doing in the, in the previous video for yeah. the warm-up. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so far there is not a ha cat and house chance that my legs are going to ever leave the floor here because look where my hips are in relation yeah. to my shoulders. Um, so I start to just engage the core. Yeah, nice. Keep so the we arms. So we see that. Now look, there's the hip bone being stacked on top of the shoulder, which is on top of the hand. So this nice. is be our yoga pose. This would be our triple head set. Yeah. Um, Love it. And if you Love want that to alignment. take the knees together, yeah. keep active. And it's like I'm trying to lengthen myself, get those toes closer to the top of the yeah. quad. I'm not hanging out. And then I just come back. Nice. And in yoga, we always make you stay at least 30 seconds down here. Because just keep the head real low below the heart, rest it out, let everything normalize, breathe, and just really enjoy the space. It can be quite a nice and woozy space, this. It's a nice place to relax. Yeah. Hmm. I think that's a, an important thing that gets missed a little bit um, rest-wise with, with some people getting a little confused sometimes within calisthenics training, where we might be trying to do something that you've never... If you've never done a headstand before, it's super maximal. It's like you've, you've never done it before. You would, uh, if, I gave, if I've gave an equivalent of like, you were trying to do a 100 kilo deadlift in the gym and you couldn't do 100 kilo yet, you wouldn't, give you, you wouldn't have a go, fail, then wait five, 10 seconds and have another go. Um, whereas we don't sometimes apply that, understand how important the rest can be between sure. reps or sets or attempts, or however you want to call it. 
Um, but if we are doing stuff that you know we're trying to redefine our impossible and it's something that we've never done before, then making sure you are having adequate rest um, is is important in between some of those attempts. That's something that a, co a common question we get yeah. coming through. Um, cool. But great. So hopefully you've seen um, that as started to help you with your initial base of um, your hand balancing, building up a little bit of strength as well as the skill in some of those crow or frog stands, um, however you want to attack that. Um, and then, then taking that and looking at some of our, um, how we stack, taking those, those principles of stacking one thing on top of the other, as in the frog, but taking it and looking at our, our trunk and body uh, alignment in that headstand but not having to worry about the balance because you've created that nice stable base with the triangle with the hands and the heads. So I hope that's helped you. Um, if you've got any questions, make sure you comment in the, in the, in the box below. If you haven't been to uh, or seen or checked out Hot Pod, you'd like to see a bit, little bit more of what that's about, uh, a link to their website is in the, in the description below. Um, but if you haven't subscribed, Make sure you click up there so you don't miss out on any of our other content. Um, if you wanted to get started in calisthenics, we've got a free beginner's guide, which is just down there. That's, you can get that for free from our website. And then if you didn't actually see last uh, video with, that we did with Sarah and Hot Pod, uh, that's up there, which was looking at shoulder mobility and warm up. Until next week, class dismissed.